the best paints that you can use when lettering are any type of acrylics, but my favorite are the ones that have primer in them because then you don't have to go over your letters twice. When it comes to brushes, you want to have a good variety of round tip brushes for lettering. Different sizes definitely help. A round tip brush is going to give you the variety in strokes when you're painting your letters on. When doing calligraphy style lettering, your downstrokes in calligraphy, which they're often called, are thicker and your upstrokes are thin. But one of the great things about painting and doing brush lettering with paint is that you don't necessarily have to follow that rule while you're painting. Aesthetically, when you're looking at the letters, you still want those downstrokes to look thicker, but you can paint them in any order that you'd like. You'll notice that I do that a lot on my letters. For example, on that R, you saw that I came down where I would have normally gone up if I were writing that traditional calligraphy R with a pen. So. Brush lettering, lettering can be tricky because you're having to think about how you would write the letter if you were writing it with a calligraphy pen, but you don't necessarily have to paint it that way. As long as you're sticking to the rules of calligraphy and keeping your thick lines where they should be and your thin lines where they should be, you can paint them up, down, around, backwards, forwards, and in between. Now, you may be asking yourself, why a round brush? Why not a flat brush? A round brush is what's gonna give you the variation in the thicknesses of your lines. When you apply very light pressure, as you can see in the video, I'm gonna get a thinner line where I want it. When I press down on the brush and apply firmer pressure, that is where you'll get your thicker lines. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to practice how the brush feels in your hand and the type of pressure that you apply. The larger your round brush is, the thicker line you're gonna get. A smaller round brush, like a size zero, is going to give you a thinner line even when you're pressing down for your thicker strokes. That's why I like to keep a variety of sizes because depending on how big the letters are or how big the pieces that you're working on, you're gonna want to choose a brush accordingly so that you get the right size strokes for the look that you're going for. Another thing you may notice in the video is that I like to dip my brush in paint almost after every stroke that I take. I keep my brush filled with paint so that I can do something that I've called the pull and pull method, where I pull the paint onto the piece and then pull it down and glide it where I want it to go. The more paint you have to work with, the less drag that your brush is going to give you. So I always say it's better to have that thick paint that you can use and pull it where you want it to go. You'll notice you can see the thickness on my letters as the paint dries. The nice thing about acrylic paint is that it dries fairly flat, so you're not gonna have that huge variation in texture that you have when you first apply that paint. One thing to keep in mind is that the more that you practice, the smoother that your letters are going to become. I can tell you that when I first started out, my letters looked nothing like they do now. So lots of practice and time put into any skill is gonna make you more proficient, more comfortable, and just give you a better feel of what that technique actually feels like in your hands. And also through that practice, you'll be able to really develop your own style. Little quirks about your lettering that make yours unique so that people recognize your style and your artistic voice through your lettering. Because really, it is an art form. You're not just painting letters, you're painting shapes and beautiful things that come to life on your canvas.